let us discuss about substitution in first order logic in the first order logic we have terms and formulas we need a more elaborate notion of substitution of terms remember that in the proposition logic we were only substituting formula from another formula now we have to think about terms and that will play a very important role in our uh, proof system later on so therefore it's very important to uh, define it properly and with uh, some care right so uh, you have a substitution sigma and what is a substitution it is a function which takes a variable and returns a term okay? a term may be closed or not doesn't matter and uh, it usually written t sigma okay? so instead of writing sigma t we write t sigma it later will become clear writing compositions become much easier in this form and that is very important also so if your sigma has a finite support ie there are only finitely many variables for which you are mapping and other variables you are not mapping then you may write like this okay t1 x1 tn xn and or you may be using this notation x1 maps to t1 xn max to tn okay? and these are equivalent notations okay and different lectures no, literatures you will find that this is used differently okay. if we may write a formula as f x1 to xk where variable x1 to sk play a special role in f and then if we replace all x1 and xks okay from the formula and put it t1 and t and then we write this formula f t1 to tn okay. So for t element of t s, uh, let the following naturally define the substitution again okay? t sigma, right? Uh, c sigma is just c, we can't replace any constant, okay? And f t1 to tn get replaced by another term, this guy. How do you get it? Uh, you basically apply the substitution on subterms okay and then build the formula okay this is simple idea recursive definition of substitution okay for example if you want to replace x by this term y by this term and then you can see that if i apply an x sigma on x then you get f of x y if i apply sigma on f x y then x is get replaced by this term and y is get replaced by this term you obtain this composition if i give you two substitutions both are functions since they are functions they can be composed a function that takes a variable and returns a term t okay if you take another substitution like sigma 2 which also takes variables and maps them to some term so what you can do first you apply this you get a term and then in this term you apply again this uh, substitution and then you get something final and that you that is called composition okay? so this is defined as follows if i if that will be written as like sigma 1 sigma 2 if we write it this way that means first i am going to apply sigma 1 and then i am going to on the resulting term i am going to apply sigma 2 and that will be the composition of my two uh, substitutions here is an example if you have a sigma 1 which uh, replaces x by this term which replaces y by this term if i compose them what will happen uh, that uh, x if you take x it will get to fx y and uh, then what happens y gets replaced by c then the finally you get something x get replaced by fx comma c now let's start with y the first thing doesn't replace to anything so y goes to y if you look at y it goes to c in the second composition so the final result would be y goes to c okay. so you can see that uh, composing these two uh, substitutions i get this substitution similarly if x is being substituted by y and y is being substituted by x then if i compose them what happens okay so you start with x right you do go to y then y takes you back to x so you get a something like x y x okay now let's start with y the this thing doesn't do anything but this thing takes you to x right so 
uh, you will get x by y okay so they are left with this is basically backwards thing so you're left with x by y i hope that is correct okay that's correct now you may have this question does this composition really work if i give you arbitrary term t and uh, i ask you to apply this composition as it's the same as first you apply sigma one and then you apply sigma two yes that is the case you can follow with structural induction this holds true please check it yourself if you don't believe it now let's look at the substitution on atoms how it works on atoms okay so first you have uh, you, uh substitution of terms will be written as f sigma what are the cases first you have a true if you apply substitution gives you true same as with false and if you you are building predicate you have a t1 to tn you apply substitution on each of the terms and you build the whole predicate okay similarly you have equality which is also x x predicate binary predicate you apply in t1 and t2 you get the result following the previous theorem you can say that composition also works in the case of atoms Furthermore, uh, we need to define the substitution in formulas. There we, we will be quantifying over variables. So substitution may get a bit unhappy about this. Therefore, we need this notation, okay? So if I say sigma x, it means whatever x being substituted to something, remove that mapping, okay? For example, in this case, okay, I have written sigma x in which mapping for the x is being removed it is being erased okay sigma x gets deleted and you're left with this guy. okay that's the purpose of writing sigma x let's see how it is being used okay defining substitution for formulas let's suppose i want to define substitution for formulas so uh we go naturally as we have been did for uh, atomic formulas if you have a negation of g then i will substitute g and negate it so it's very simple Similarly, I will going to do for binary operator. Very nice. Let's think about the quantifiers. If the quantifiers, once you enter in this formula, what happens is the outside x and the inside x are different. So you cannot say that I'm the x which occurred outside, which is being replaced uh, by a substitution, should be uh, done for inside. No. So as soon as as soon as you cross over a quantifier then you have to say i am not going to replace x anymore because this is new x so you drop that x mapping and then move on and that's it okay so let's apply this definition on some examples on this example if you apply so i am going to take x out and put y in so wherever x occurs i am going to replace this guy gets replaced with y but remember as you get in the mapping gets deleted for x so here I'm not going to replace anything. Okay, so finally I obtain P of Y implies for all X QX. Now let us this example. There exist Y X not equals to Y. Okay, so now I take Z and bring Z for X. Okay, so let's see if I try to do that. Will it work? Yes, I can just go ahead and put it because there's no quantifier over x so it is not going to bother anybody so uh, it is going to succeed very nice now let's try to do another substitution on the same formula now y is coming in okay and x is going out okay so what happens wherever x occurs i'm going to put the y in look at that there's no conflict over quantifiers when you're coming in so then i can i'm allowed to do so you can see that now what ha funny thing has happened x is out y is in and this formula is suddenly becomes false okay and while this may have been true so this seems like an odd substitution and this is wrong okay so what went wrong with this definition something is off here okay so so i deliberately confused you and showed you wrong definition okay so there should be some other condition on those definitions so then something is are disallowed okay now let us look at the correct substitution formulation for that we need to define something called suitability of a substitution what is when a substitution is suitable if with respect to formula j and a variable x if for all y okay for all y that are free in g 
means only those free variables in G if you replace them with by some other term right X should not be there if X is there then there's a problem it's not then suitable right so what happens is like if you have some quantifier for all X and there is some term and then here is a Y okay now this Y if you replace with Sigma Y Y Sigma and then you find that X is appearing here then you're essentially introducing an X which is quantified in outer scope and that breaks the logic of uh, first order logic so therefore you should not be doing that and that was the reason why the previous example failed so now how you fix the definition the negation and the binary operators in proposition logic remains the same the quantifiers you need to write a condition that when you are saying sigma then it's suitable with respect to g and x okay that's the requirement this is not a true restriction we will see later that you are names are always interchangeable in 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 first order logic in under certain context so having a restriction that particular name must not appear it's not a true restriction to expressibility of the logic so let's look at a theorem which is sort of a the suitability aware such that we understand how this is going on okay so let's suppose f sigma 1 is defined i means when you do substitution is everything comes out to be suitable and similarly f sigma 1 sigma 2 is defined okay then i can say that f sigma 1 sigma 2 is same as f sigma 1 sigma 2 okay so first that means the composition works okay so let's see how can prove that the composition works for a formula non-quantified cases are simple and simply implemented by structural induction okay so let's look at quantified case okay for all xg we will assume that this substitution works for this guy and then we'll show the substitution for this guy so i have assumption that these two are defined if that is the case then i can say that sigma g sigma 1 x is defined because the, what sigma 1 does it just removes the mapping for one variable so it, it more likely the sig g sigma 1 x is going to be defined similarly if this guy is defined I, since i'm dropping the mappings this is going to be defined now by induction hypothesis i assume that this is equal to this guy now i'm going to show it for f also so first let's establish this is g sigma 1x sigma 2x is equal to if you pull x out okay? so you have this equation and from this i want to pull x out okay so how do we do that uh, since there is um, uh, no x being mapped here right so i will say i will start only try to map with y okay so let's say y, where does the y go okay so if y goes to sigma x 1x and sigma 2x i apply the definition of composition i get this since x is not being mapped by sigma 1 x and y is not x so therefore it is same as y sigma 1 okay so y sigma 1 is is does not have an x and this guy is not mapping x therefore you get y sigma 1 sigma 2 y x does not is does not appear in y sigma one because of the suitable condition okay so please check why which suitability condition applies that okay so you got y sigma one sigma two right and uh, since uh, y is not x so if you project it on x it doesn't change anything therefore you got this pulling of x is possible okay now you know that so let's see if I can uh, prove the uh, composition works for this particular formula. So this is the left hand side. You have uh, sigma 1 first applied, then sigma 2 applied. What you can do, we can just push sigma 1, sigma 2 uh, inside by just using the definition of how substitution goes inside a formula. So we obtain this thing. Okay. This we know is equal to this guy. So let's put it there and we got this okay and uh, well 
this is the definition of uh, substitution uh, for uh, uh, x uh, sigma sigma to x applied to f so we just simply expand it okay and we'll get this okay. so fairly simple uh, proof but however in critical moments suitability comes into play okay so please look into that that this theorem really needs suitabilities 